What's going on guys? I'm glad you're here at Seaver Shoots out in the beautiful Utah mountains with an amazing view. Uh, hopefully it's not too windy. It was too windy. So here I am in my safe room. Before I get any deeper into this review, I wanted to talk about Instagram a little bit. I have always been at Seaver Shoots because that's where I started. So that's why I announced myself like that here, even though I'm just Seaver Shoots here. If you like the content that I'm putting out here, then you will also like the content that I'm putting on Instagram. So if you're not already following me there, head on over to Instagram and give me a follow. I would really appreciate that. So today what I wanted to talk about is a gun that I was out on the range shooting in front of that beautiful view, and that is the Smith & Wesson M&P 2.0 Compact. This is the four inch version. They do have a three and a half inch version, but I think the longer barrel is better and the longer slide is better and the longer rail is better. And I'll talk about that. Let's just dive right in. Obviously, size-wise meant to compete with the Glock 19. And in my opinion, Glock 19, Smith & Wesson M&P 2.0 Compact. And then the rest of them are all up here. So I don't love this gun. I'm gonna say that up front, but I do think it's a viable option, especially for first time buyers. So let's talk about the sights. We'll just start from the top and go to the bottom. The sights are okay. They are three dot night sights. Now you'll notice as I line them up, as I go up here, that we have a U-notch. I don't like that. For whatever reason, I see the goalpost way better than I see the U-notch. When I press out with the U-notch, I tend to go a little too high and then have to dip the muzzle down to get the front sight into the notch. Now, I know that I could change that, but I prefer things like that that need special tools for changing to come with the gun right out of the box. So it kind of bothers me that I would have to buy a jig and new sights in order to switch that back sight out to something that I like better. I just prefer it to come out of the box. It does come with night sights, which I think every gun should have night sights, especially for firearms that have defensive applications for you in your everyday life. The slide is okay. I wish it had uh, forward slide serrations. It's got these little scallops. Now the one good thing I will say is that it's pretty glassy. So if you pinch up here at the front, you can still get your press checks. Um, but other manipulations when your hands are slippery, bloody, whatever, um, might be a little bit more difficult at the front of the gun because of the lack of serrations. So I, I would prefer to see that. Back serrations are great. I just wish they were the same up here. And now I think the only reason that they didn't was because they slapped Smith & Wesson here and they slapped M&P here. Skip the logos, put serrations on, even Glock has learned that now into their fifth generation of firearms that people want forward slide serrations. Plenty of aftermarket accessibility for this slide. You can get people to mill it for an optic. You can get people to put on your slide serrations. You can buy a slide that is already ready to go with those things if you wanted to. So I think that's kind of awesome. The barrel, nothing special. Same thing, plenty of aftermarket options. You can get suppressor ready, fluted, different colors, whatever you're looking for. The whole upper assembly, in my opinion, is good to go. I, there are just some things that I don't really love about it. Let's talk about the rail. Typical 1913 Picatinny rail. Allows all your lights and lasers. I have my Enforce APLC as always because I like that it's flush fit. Um, so one of the reasons that I like the uh, four inch barrel length is it allows a full length rail and then most lights will fit flush fit with the gun, which also makes it more comfortable for carry in my opinion. I don't have anything sticking out. There's just a nice flat edge here. So nothing is poking me in the junk or rubbing against my leg. Let's talk about the controls next. That's where I had issues as far as manipulation goes. For whatever reason, this is the only striker fire gun I've ever shot that I had issues with this. This is the only gun period I've ever shot that I've had issues with this. But I guess I just ride it a little too hard and I don't get the slide locking back. All right, one R ones, trying to stay under four seconds if possible. Ooh, 367. And that's with the slide not locking back. Now, that's not the biggest deal. It's much worse to have the slide locking when you don't want it to 
than to have it not locking at all. In my opinion, it's not that big of a deal and I could train my grip if I really wanted to carry this or use this in defensive applications. Um, but for now, I just think that's a good training thing for me in general. When I'm shooting this gun, it helps me get better at manipulations uh, so that if I am shooting another gun and it doesn't lock back, I will already know what to do. They're big, they stick out, they're easy to actuate. I haven't had any issues with dropping the slide or anything like that, and they're ambidextrous for those of you who are wrong-handed. Now let's get into the uh, magazine release. The magazine release is good. I wish it was a little bit more raised, and I don't know if there's aftermarket support for that. There might be. Um, but I, like I said, I wish that it was a little bit more out there. That being said, I have no issues getting the magazines in and out, flip upside down, do our release test, and it pops up and locks in. So no issues there. The next issue I'm going to talk about is my biggest gripe with this gun, and it's the lack of a beveled magwell. Every other firearm that I own, ARs and everything, has a beveled magwell. If it accepts a magazine, it has a beveled magwell. I don't know why they didn't do this. My CZ, P01 Omega, all steel frame, came with a beveled magwell. My P365 XL, tiny gun, has a beveled magwell. My uh, X-Carry has a beveled magwell. So I don't know why they missed the beat on that, but they did. <sighs> there is aftermarket support for that. You could spend 70 bucks and get an aftermarket magwell for this firearm. So it's not the end of the world, but I wish it came out of the box with the things other guns are coming out of the box with. The magazines are fine. They're metal, 15 round. I did notice that the Base plates were starting to walk themselves off after I dropped them a couple times. I don't know if the pin in there just kind of sucks, but again, lots of aftermarket stuff. You can get just base plates that are a little bit bigger and easier to get with your palm when you're inserting, or you can get extendos that up your capacity, whichever way you want to go. Let's talk about the grip. The grip is pretty nice. It's better than a Glock, I can tell you that for sure. The back straps, this is small, there's also medium and large. I wish this would have been the medium and that there was a smaller. If you have small hands, you're not gonna shoot this gun well with the small back strap because you're gonna be readjusting your grip after every shot. There's no way that you're gonna be able to engulf this thing in your tiny little fingers, I'm sorry. I have medium teetering on the edge of large hands and it's just right for me, the small one. The other two are kind of hilarious looking, how big they are, uh, so I, I find no use for them. Going off of that, the stippling is also just too aggressive. I can't handle it. It's destroying my undershirts. I would never carry this without an undershirt. That sounds like a nightmare. It's not necessarily ripping the flesh off of my bones, but it would definitely rub you the wrong way and irritate you. So if I were to carry this, I'd have to get it stippled to something less aggressive. Now, it does stick in your hand really well, but you can get something less aggressive that won't kill your stomach that will also lock it into your hand just fine. I've talked a lot about aftermarket support of this gun, and I think the most important aftermarket thing is your trigger. The reason that I got this, I got this in a personal sale. All of my handguns are from personal sales, actually. And this one, I got it because it was below MSRP, the round count was low, it was in the 50s, and it came with an apex curved trigger that the guy put in. So I was like, great, sounds good to me. So let's go ahead, turn on your favorite Garen thumb video, put on some Unchained Melody, put your hands on my hips. No rounds in the magazine, no rounds in the gun. Put your finger over mine, and let's go ahead and squeeze. Okay, hitting some resistance now. Little bit of take up, snap. Really clean, this trigger is awesome, I love it. Now, I'll come in close for the let out, and I'm gonna do it really slow. It's not a long let out, but I'm just doing it very slow so you can see it. Okay, awesome. 
Let's do it at a normal speed. This trigger is fantastic. I've shot stock M&P triggers and they are not fantastic. So that's probably the biggest upgrade that I would recommend if you're going to get this firearm. If you're getting this gun, odds are good. You're getting it for concealed carry and you should. It is a nice, small, smaller sized gun. Uh, holds 15 rounds and, you know, it's not going to destroy whatever area of your body that you're carrying it on. All right, there are lots of holster companies. Any of the popular ones that you can think of will make a holster for this gun. I went with my buddy Dan, who owns a company called McKinnitech Holsters. They are great. The one that I'm about to show you is his concealed carry. It's called the Talon Holster and it's very affordable. I believe it's around $60 and he doesn't add in extra for colors or lights and things like that. It's just one flat solid price. So I'm wearing the Talon right now. In the video, you will also see me using his drop zone, uh, drop leg setup. His holsters are quality and affordable. You will not find a better deal than McKinnitech holsters. So I'll go ahead and show you here. Conceals pretty good, even though I am actually wearing workout shorts. And I'm gonna talk about how I conceal in these. Um, but as you can see, like there's a little something. I, I would not carry this gun in these shorts specifically, but just to show you, it's definitely doable. And my shirt, I don't know, it's not super tight. It's a little on the tighter side for me, but there it is with my belly. The way that I do this is I actually have a belt that I like to wear on the inside of my waistband. And then I clip the clips over the belt and over the waistband at the same time. And it holds it in there nice and snug and secure. Now I usually carry with an undershirt. I'm not currently, so bear with me. This might be painful as I pull hairs out of my stomach as I draw this, but it is very easy to get to. And very easy to get it back in there. So let's go ahead and pull it out for you. If you've watched my other videos, then you know I'm not a massive fan of the big, fat, foamy clip, but I do think it's fine. It's, it's better than one singular skinny clip, in my opinion. Um, it doesn't move too much, but it moves just enough to bend with you as you're moving around. It is cantable, which is awesome. You can see his logo right here, the M on his clips. Claw, always and forever. Doesn't matter where you wear this on the clock, the claw will help you to conceal it. Especially like people ask all the time, four o'clock, five o'clock, should I have a claw? Yes. When you go to bend over, what sticks out of your back when you're carrying there? It's the grip of the gut. The whole point of the claw is to suck that grip in to your body, wherever it is. So if this is sucked more into your back when you go to bend over, it's not gonna print as much, all right? I used to carry there. I don't really anymore. I do every once in a while if I'm like, I don't know. Depends on the kinds of clothes that I'm wearing and the kinds of activities that I'm doing, but I typically carry at the appendix, and this is very comfortable. McKinnitech, he's got tons of options, whatever you want. He even, like my P365XL with the tactical development rail and the APLC, he makes stuff for that. So, highly recommended. Easy to find holsters for this. My final thoughts on the Smith & Wesson M&P 2.0 Compact 4 inch. It's good to go, okay? I don't shoot it fantastic, but I shoot it better than Glocks. And in my opinion, the ergonomics are better. It looks better. Uh, I am just overall more comfortable with it. I'm looking for versatility, as you guys know, and everything that I'm looking to purchase. I want what I get to have a wide range of uses and to be very flexible. And this fits that, again, there's just a lot of things that I don't love about it. I may in the future choose to upgrade it and make it a main guy in my rotation. But for now, I just like to use it as a, as a little range toy and to show off to you guys so that you can see if you want to get one. Um, again, Glock, Smith & Wesson M&P 2.0 Compact, and then all my other guys up there, my CZs, my SIGs, my FNs are all up a little bit higher. 
If you liked this video, like and subscribe. If you did not, let me know down in the comments why, because I want to make my videos better for you. That's the whole point of this. So, as always, I will catch you later.